Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and I thought I would sit down and do another video for you guys and gals. Let me get a sip of water first. My beautiful radio voice going, and let's talk about this. All right, another loss for the supplement industry. Again, another reason I've been telling people, look, there's a handful of supplements that probably work. And they're kind of situational. What do I take these days? I do, I've started taking my creatine again because I have it a huge container of it. There's, this shows some small, little, tiny, tiny, tiny benefits. But they're nothing to, to be, like, really excited about. But, you know, I'll take the free extra couple ounces of muscle, I guess, over a few years. Um, I'll take it. Um, I do take protein just because I do like uh, I, the high-quality way. I only take it post-workout these days. Um, I don't even take it on my non-training days. I like electrolytes. Um, I oh, because I, I try to eat a really high potassium, high magnesium diet. I add some of those powders every day. I buy them bulk off Amazon. Um, you know, plus I bumped my sodium back up again today. I needed it for training purposes, but I'm big on, on electrolytes in general. But those are really just food. They're just minerals. Um, that's about it. That's really all I'm doing. I can get my omega threes from food. So. I've been trying to tell people, look, the data's coming out more and more. Most of these things don't work that well. So they took this study and they're like, we have long-term data now. And like I said, I came across it in Forbes, like on their website, in my news stories, on my phone. And I went ahead and peeked at the study. So what they found is they're 22 years deep into this long-term study and still collecting data. 18,000 women who were prescribed to take vitamin D3 and calcium. They didn't reduce their bone fractures. They didn't reduce hip fractures. None of this stuff reduced. Why? Because load-bearing exercises are really what we need. The diet in, it matters, but it seems to be diet, not so much what you supplement. The supplements don't seem to do a lot for bone density. If anything, more protein seems to help with bone density. Weight training is the number one thing you can do for bone density along with a good balanced diet. Weight training, weight training, weight training. This has been found over and over and over in the literature. You guys saw my DEXA scans years ago. Look at where my bone density was over age 40. It was almost off the charts. I was fourth standard deviation on the bell curve above normal. That's how high my bone density was from powerlifting. Well, in my 40s. All right. I know people personally who are older, competed in strength sports, uh, who had to have hip or knee replacements. Um, I, someone very close to me who competes at a very advanced age in powerlifting, close family member, they had to have a hip replaced. It had nothing to do with lifting. It was not uh, uh, osteoarthritis related. It was due to inflammation. They had a major inflammation problem. Had to have their hip replaced. We're talking like 70 years old. After having the hip replaced, a year later, they stepped back on the powerlifting platform and competed and hit a respectable number on the squat. Hey, bone density. I mean, bounce right back. Again, modern surgeries are a lot better, but you get the idea. Weight training is the best thing we can do here. Absolutely is. Um, so the same thing we find with the, the other stuff. They look at other risk factors. They're like, well... Something like approximately whatever, 1,800 of them died during this time period of uh, heart disease. Another big chunk died of cancer. And when they tallied the numbers, they're like, well, slightly more of them on the supplements survived cancer. So the death rate was slightly higher in the placebo of heart disease. So but they're like, it's statistically significant, but not a lot. Because when we did the cancer, here's the other thing. It's like, well, let's see if it's protective against cancer. More of them died of cancer. So when they tallied the numbers up, mortality rates from these diseases total, the supplement group had a higher, slightly, slightly higher total mortality rate. What would be the idea here? Well, it's not overall protective of health, it's not protecting more against mortality, it's not helping longevity, it's not helping against bone fractures. We come back over to cardiovascular disease and cancer, though, what do? Uh, a, a better diet overall. In other words, this is proof you can't supplement your way around a bad diet. Because we know diet has an enormous 
absolutely monstrously enormous correlation with these things, okay? With cancer deaths, uh, diabetes deaths, heart disease, it's, it's probably the single largest factor. Overall is gonna be your diet. We know plants and things are protective against these things. Fruits, vegetables, all right? The bad stuff you don't want, a bunch of saturated fat, a bunch of refined sugars. These are horrible for them all the way around the board. The data is strong in support of this. You can't supplement your way around these. You simply can't do it. So we come back over to the point where weight training and a good diet are your cures. Because look at, at weight training, we know at this point, weight training even beats cardio for cardiovascular health. And I know that sounds like a misnomer, because it's like, what do you mean? Weight training is better than cardio for cardio health? <laughs> you know, so people hear that and they say that. It's like, well, because we named cardio that a long time ago. Modern data shows that weight training is slightly better for heart health overall, for reducing cardiovascular disease. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do any cardio because found when they're combined together, it's an even stronger response. Well, lo and behold, being more well-rounded in your physical fitness across the board is pretty good for your heart. Okay, shouldn't be a big surprise, but the data shows it. Same thing with cancers. Strength training dramatically reduces cancer rates, and it dramatically increases survival of cancer if you do happen to get it, when combined with treatment right, with proper therapy, it increases the chances of surviving things like chemo. Well, there we go. Strong people are harder to kill. See where we're going with this? Supplements barely play into the equation. Over and over and over, we're finding they just don't do that much. Sometimes they do a little. In some cases, they might help with a major deficiency, a situational deficiency, and we can't take away from that. But that's oftentimes already handled by the FDA and other people. They already fortify a lot of foods to, to stave off the wide scale issues there. And you see that a lot. There's a reason your milk is fortified. There's a reason white rice is fortified. There's a reason breakfast cereals and things are fortified with certain, certain stuff. It is to make sure children get proper nutrition. And a less than perfect environment, to try to offset some of the mistakes of, of you know, parenting issues and socioeconomics, right? They make an effort to do that. And in those cases, these are ones that are shown to work. That's why they do them in those situations because they are addressing wide scale deficiencies. Barring those wide scale deficiencies, I mean, again, this is exactly what we're finding. You can't just not have a good diet and just supplement calcium and D3 and everything's gonna be hunky-dory. It just doesn't seem to work. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys and gals 